church. I'm excited that you guys have decided to join me this morning. I ask you to get your Bibles and ask you to meet me right back here. We are going to be continuing for our lesson on choices for the month of July. Okay? So I'll meet you right back here. See you in a minute. Bye-bye.
guys. Are you ready? Okay, we're going to pray. We're going to get started. Father, we come before you. We thank you, God, for this morning. We thank you, God, that you woke us up this morning. Father God, we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. Father, we pray now that you will take this word, Lord God, and hide it deep in our hearts, that we will not sin against you. Help us to make good, positive choices, Lord, in our lives, Lord, that will bring glory and honor to you. We ask this, Lord God, knowing that you hear us, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Okay, guys, another story we're going to be covering today in the Bible is coming from those who have your Bibles. Let's turn to Luke chapter 15, and we're going to start with verse. We're not going to start with um, verse 10, but we're going to move it up a little bit, okay? We're going to move it up to the title of it. It's called The Parable of the Lost Son, and I'm going to bring you up to date on this story. It basically covers a father that had two sons. And they, he had a big farm, I mean, he had money, he had everything. And the kids didn't lose or nothing. They had everything that they needed. But it said that one of the sons decided that he didn't want to work with, for his father in the morning and waited for his inheritance. He wanted to have his inheritance now. He wanted to have what he would have been given if his father had passed. But he was impatient, guys. And he wanted what he was due now. So he went to his father and he told his father that he want his inheritance right now. He didn't want to wait. So of course his father gave in and his father gave it to him. Then he said, we, this is where we're going to start at. We're going to start in verse 11. Yes, we're going to start in verse 11. And it says, Jesus continued and there was a man. This is a story he's telling us. There was a man who had two sons. The youngest one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. That means give me my share of the property inheritance. So he, his father divided the property between the two of them. It then said not long after that, the youngest son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in, in, in wild living. That means he went, took all his money, left home, went to a big, huge country like New York, California, and then it said he squandered, which means he spent all of his money. All of his money, guys. He was broke, basically. This is what it goes on to say. It said, after he had spent everything, there was severe famine in that whole country, and he had become in need. That means there was a famine, and he decided that he needed to get the job because he didn't have any money. And he was hungry. And we know what a famine is, right? A famine when crops, everything basically dies. Nothing grows. And there's a shortage of everything. Okay? So not only that was he poor, but he was also living in a, a country where there was a famine. Okay? So it says here, next verse. Verse, let me make sure. Verse 15. It says, so he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country, which means he went looking for a job, basically. It says, who sent him to his fields to feed pigs, guys. Come on, to feed pigs. And it says, he went, he sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the food that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. It says that the pigs was eating better than the son. But remember, he was at home. He had everything he needed, okay? But he made a choice that he wanted all his stuff right then and there, all his money, everything. He said, I want it now. He didn't want to wait, okay? And then it goes on to say, it says, when he came to his senses, which means he probably was sitting there one day as he was feeding those hogs, and he said, well, hold up. He said, my dad got money. My dad got food. I'm going to go back home and I'm going to just ask him to forgive me. And I know he will accept me. And if he don't, I just get a job. I ask him to hire me as, as an owner. I mean, as a um, worker. So this is what he did. He said, so, he said, he said to himself, how many of my father's hired men have food and spare? That means the men that his dad had hired, he know they have food. Then he says, and here I am starving to death. I would set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, 
I have sinned against heaven and have sinned against you. He rebates repented. That's what it's saying, guys. It says, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. So he was willing to come back and work for his father. Not even be acknowledged as his son anymore because of what he had did. He felt so bad. But look what happened, God. This is the good part. It says, so he caught, he caught up, he got up and went to his father. He got up and went home. He said, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. That means dad was excited, guys. He was excited. And he said, he ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and he kissed him. See, this is the good part. He had a choice. He could have stayed at home, enjoyed himself. He was fat. He had somewhere to live. He, I mean, he had everything. He wasn't lacking nothing. But because he was impatient, he wanted his stuff right then and there. But even in the midst of that, you know, God laid even God even laid it on his heart and reminded him, "Hey, you have a father. Go back and re get it right along with your father. Yes, you made a bad choice, but go back and get it right with your father." So he listened, which is a key. Because when we make choices, guys, even when we make bad choices, we still got a choice in that bad choice to make the right choice. Did you hear me? You still got a choice that you can change in the midst of making a bad choice. That can be good. Let's go on. It says, but while he was still away, his dad ran out and he met him. He put his arms around him, guys. He was so excited. And he kissed him. That lets you know he was excited. To see his son. And the son said to his dad, Father, I have sinned against heaven and I've sinned against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But look what his dad said. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring me the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet and bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a fast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate, guys. This is the key, guys. Even when we make a bad choice, I just said it, we can also make another choice from that bad choice to be good and do the right thing. And he did the right thing. He basically came back and asked his father for forgiveness. He repented and asked God to for his father to forgive him. And that's what God wants us to do. Even in the midst of our choices that we make, guys, we're going to make bad choices. We're going to make bad choices because we're human and we're on this earth. And as long as we're on this earth, we're going to make bad choices. Okay. But when we do, the good thing is, all we have to do is what, guys? What, what did the son do? He went and repented to his father. He told his father, I'm sorry. I'm not even worthy to be your son. I'm willing to come back and work as a servant. And his father loved him so much. His father hugged him and kissed him. And his father was so excited that he put on a celebration to acknowledge his son's return. And that's what God wants us to do. Whenever we repent, guys, he just wants us to come back to him. Just return to him. And if you knew God and you walked away from him, that's what he's saying to you today. Those of you that accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you walked away from God, it's not too late to return. Make a right choice. God in right now. Choose to come to God. Say, God, I repent. I ask you to forgive me and place me back in the purpose and plans you have for my life. It's that simple, guys. Just repent. That's all he said, repent. And God will celebrate. Just like his son, his father did for his son, celebrate his son's return. God will celebrate. You're returning home to where he wants you to be, guys. Okay? So, yes, we're going to make choices. Everything we do in life, remember, the whole month of July, is about choices. Bad choices, good choices. But remember what Moses approached the Israelites with as they was coming into the promised land. What did he tell them? Today, I give you blessings, favor, blessings in life, death, and curses, guys. We all got to choose. It's up to us. And the good thing is, guys, God wants us to choose blessings in life. Blessings in life. 
God wants to make right choices. Because with right choices comes life. Amen. And just like that son, he had to go and learn it the hard way. He had to go somewhere in a far away place, become poor, end up feeding pigs, and was wanting the pig's food. He was so hungry. God doesn't want us to do that. Okay? So the next time you're in a predicament, and you're in the middle of making a choice in a situation, pray and ask God about it. Ask him, what should I do in this choice? Father, help me so I don't make the wrong choice. Amen? Because God loves you. And guess what? I do too. So until I see you again, I want you to remember, make right choices. Amen? Amen? Because God loves you. Take care. Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. Hi, my name's Samuel. Today's verse we're going to be reading is Luke 15, verse 10. Okay, there we go. Okay, it says, In the same way I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. That's it, guys. And stay hydrated. Attention So I shift my gaze in your direction Yeah, I look to you, God Oh, even when the clouds